In 2016, it was the smell of rotten egg and sulfur in the air that led me to this spot here, where I eventually discovered that heat and vapors were rising from the ground. Since then, I have been asking questions of what this is exactly. Is it geothermal activity? That is my biggest question. I have asked many experts in the field, and I have gotten mixed answers, and I have done my own research. It has been almost five years now, and I am still not 100% sure what this could be. So in today's video, I will go more in depth and give more details, and we will explore more about this strange mystery. So, could there be possible geothermal activity in this area? That is what I'll be discussing today, as well as a little bit of geology. For those of you who have seen my past videos on this subject, you'll have an idea of what I'm talking about. If not, you can go check them out here in the corner. Some of them are old and a little outdated as far as quality goes, but uh, they're there. I also have some footage of the one of the openings back here releasing some vapors and heat, if you want to see that as well, to get an idea of what I'm talking about here. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Wyatt, and I hope you enjoy uh, future content that I put out if you stick around for that long. Since about the start of 2016 when I noticed this, there has been, uh, I've, well, let me start at the beginning. So I first noticed the smell of sulfur and that rotten egg smell, which I'm assuming is likely hydrogen sulfide. I smelt that in the air and I was wondering if it could be coming from the rocks because it was kind of strange for that strong of a smell to be coming from this area, I thought. Later in the fall and fall and winter of 2016 into 17, I came here in a clear fall cold day. It was about 23 degrees that day. And there were noticeable vapors coming from one of the openings back there. One time during the night after an intense snowfall with a spotlight and I shined it across and there were just big columns of vapors rising into the air. This, so, this heat is only really noticeable during the colder times of the seasons. And the most activity, as far as heat and vapors go, was during the winter of 2016 into 17. Since then, it has not been very active, except for maybe one time during 2019, there was a little bit of a spike. I did get a thermal imaging camera to detect some of the possible heat. Uh, further up on the hill, there was a couple areas that used to produce a little bit of vapors and heat and stuff, but since then, they have not been very uh, active. Uh, one of the days, I did record the internal uh, heat temperature coming out of the ground as best I could. It was cold that day, it was 23 degrees. The inside of the caves, if you call them that, were about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, so significantly warmer. Any water vapor that was in under the ground, once it reaches the surface, it just turns into noticeable vapor, kind of like when you breathe in cold air. That's what was kind of happening here. Now, for the last couple of years, I've been asking that question myself. Is this geo true geothermal activity or is it something else? I have asked lots of professionals in the field, geologists, geophysicists, and I've gotten several different answers over the years. So I've done my own research. The most compelling evidence or the best evidence I have as far as this being actual low temperature geothermal activity is there is a well that was drilled not too far away from here by an agency, I cannot remember the name, but they were specifically looking for geothermal related things. So it was about a mile to the north or less, they drilled a well to about, it was either three or 500 feet or meters, can't remember the depth exactly. The water temperature at that depth was recorded to 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit, if I converted that right. And no, I didn't do the math in my head, I'm not that good. I just have talked about this enough to have that memorized. I believe the normal temperature for our aquifer is about 52, 52 degrees Fahrenheit or around 57 degrees Fahrenheit with the lows being around 48. And that'll depend on where you're at in the aquifer, but for the aquifer to be 68 degrees, that seems a little uh, significantly high, especially at those depths. So that seems unnormal, and since it's close to where we have the visible heat coming out of the ground, they could be related. So something I discovered recently was an article, and I think it was recently done by a geologist, I believe up in BC, Canada, just across the border to the north. They were doing research and looking for what they call blind geothermal systems. Blind geothermal systems, from what I, my understanding, are geothermals that have no visible evidence at the surface. So there's no hot springs, no steaming, nothing along those lines. They are existing, but below the surface, unseen. They also did some studies involving the different faults in the area as well as earthquake activity. One of the faults that was in their studies is the same fault that is only a couple of miles to the east from here. It is the northern extent of the fault, actually goes up into Canada itself, 
with before terminating, I believe, into another fault, possibly. And they did a little bit of studies on the very northern end of that fault. But that fault also comes through here. And there's a relation between earthquake activity and the faults and where you have more earthquakes. That tends to be locations where you have more hot springs popping up, as well as blind geothermal systems. But the blind geothermal systems were extending farther to the south than some of the hot springs were uh, shown uh, at the surface. And there's also some blind faults that are not exposed at the surface, but buried underneath glacial sediments that also exist. So those fluids could travel up those faults into the glacial sediments and aquifers and mix with the cooler water. That might be what's happening just a mile to the north from here, possibly. So I mentioned earthquake activity. We do get earthquakes here, and recently in 2015, we had a swarm of earthquakes on the same fault that was mentioned in that research paper. The earthquakes were at depths of anywhere from a few kilometers from the surface all the way down to 20 kilometers below the earth. Now, as far as around here, since that earthquake activity is further to the north, and it, I thought it might be a coincidence, or it could be related, there was the, the intense swarm, well, it wasn't intense, but there was the swarm in 15. It's not too far away from this location. Maybe it shook something over here to make things uh, loose for this blind geothermal, if that's what it is here, to maybe release some heat. And last year, we did have a 2.8 earthquake strike about 17 kilometers near this location, further to the west, across the border in Washington, in this same mountain group at 17 kilometers below the surface. People actually felt that one and heard that earthquake as well. And I did record that on my personal seismometer. If you want your own personal seismometer, it is called a Raspberry Shake. I will leave a promo code for you to get a, I believe it's 5% off. Many people in the area did feel that earthquake and uh, it stirred things up a little bit for people around here. Not much, it was only a 2.8. But the point being, we do get earthquakes here, so possibly that is shaking things up to make it so things come up to the surface. There's also, I believe, a unidentified fault, or more of the northern extent of a fault that isn't mapped in this area, but not even a mile from here. It would be a very large fault if it does exist. I don't know how large, maybe I shouldn't say very large. It would be a decent sized fault. And that, if it is, could be a good path for possible water to travel to the surface. It's unknown, though. Can't prove it yet. There, I believe there is surface evidence for this fault, and it's not just one piece of surface evidence. It's a couple, three or four different locations, and they're all linear. They all align, so I don't think it's a coincidence. I think there is a fault that exists in this area that's unmapped. And I am planning on uh, talking to someone about this. I actually sent an email to a geologist uh, from the Idaho Geological Survey. And it so happens that he's actually going to be at my university here. And he would like to meet up with me and talk about this fault. So hopefully I can get answers on that soon. And hopefully we can discuss it and see if there it likely is a fault in this area. But that could explain a couple of things around here. Even the earthquakes that have happened here. We've had a couple earthquakes, and there's no known really any faults around here, except further to the west there are a couple faults, but the earthquakes have been happening in areas where there's no known fault to exist, which means there could be one that's unidentified, which is very likely. There are many faults around here. Most of the ones that are unmapped are probably very small, but the one I'm talking about could be about 30, 40 miles long if it exists. So to get more answers to what is exactly occurring here and what could be happening, more research is needed and more research is always needed, usually when it comes to anything geology. Anyways, this will do for today. Hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope I can make another one soon and I'll see you all in the next video. You all take care, have a great day, stay safe, and uh, see you soon.